Hey, this is Dan Wunderlich from Defining Grace. Have you ever seen a church with a really great social media presence like Life Church? And they're always posting cool things to Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, like images with Bible verses in cool fonts over hip backgrounds, or promotions for an event or a sermon series, or a quote from an author or a guest speaker or one of their pastors. And you've thought, I would love to have great graphics like that for my ministry, but I don't have the budget for Photoshop and I don't have the design skills. Well, I'm here to walk you through two free services you can use to create great social media graphics for your church or campus ministry. The first service I want to introduce you to is called Design Feed, and you can find it online at designfeed.io. This is a great service for beginners because they offer you high-quality templates that you can edit, but you can't really change it too much. You can't really break the design. Now, you'll notice here at the time of recording, Design Feed is still in private beta, which means you do have to request an invitation, and the developers are still working on it. But I got my invitation within a day or two, and I've had no major problems since using the service. Here on the dashboard, we click the plus button to begin. We're then given a worksheet that will be used to create our templates. So the headline text might be your Bible verse or your really profound quote. The subtitle text is optional, but maybe that's where you put the scripture reference or the name of the person who said the really profound quote. We'll skip most of the other options for now, but under photo options, let's go to preview size. Every social media network has an ideal image size and shape, and they're all different. You can ask for recommendations for all social media networks, or you can select one. Let's choose Instagram and select Create It. You then come to a page of templates, and this is the key step in using Design Feed, because like I said, you can edit some of the elements, but not all of them. So for example, you can change what the text says and the color of the text, but you can't change the font, the size of the text, or the layout of the image. You can change the background, so don't worry about that so much at this point. Just look for some text and a layout that conveys the feeling you're going for. If you don't like any of the initial options, you can hit load more, but I like this one right here, so I'm going to select tweak it. Here in the editor, you can change the color of the text, you can make it all caps, you can add a drop shadow, and you can edit the text that you've already put in. You also have access to some of the options we skipped earlier, like a button. Let's go ahead and add a button. This would be a great place for a hashtag, a website address, a phone number, or a call to action. Let's add a hashtag. Let's say I'm going to make a series of images with profound quotes, so I'm going to type in hashtag profound quotes. It's going to automatically generate the button, but you can change the text color and the color of the background. Let's see what it gives us. All right, I'm happy with that, so I'm going to leave it that way for now. Let's add a footer. We'll put in my website address. Again, if you don't like the color that Design Feed chooses, you can change it here. I'm fine with the white. Now, as much as I love Steve Jobs and I am working on a Mac, it's kind of a creepy background, so let's change it by selecting Edit Background. You can choose from their curated images, their library of high-quality free images, or you can select My Library and upload photos of your own. Here are some suggestions, but when I think of the word profound, I think of the sunrise. So let's look for an image of the sunrise. If you don't like any of the initial images, that's okay. You can click Load More. But I like this image right here. I'm actually really happy with this image. If the color of the button didn't go very well with the background, maybe I would change the color of the button, but I'm happy with it. You'll also notice down here in the bottom right corner is my logo. Design Feed has branding tools, which is really awesome. It's not a feature you'll find in the other service I'm going to walk you through. Notice, too, that I've created a light version and a dark version of my logo. Look what happens when I create the dark version. It doesn't really show up very well. It also doesn't match the rest of the elements. So I'm going to go back to the light version. You can also change the size of your logo or the opacity, whether it's see-through or not. Now again, I am happy with this image. You could continue to edit it if you'd like, but I'm going to click Done. You're then taken to the Share and Schedule page. You'll notice our original image is here on the left. When you hover over it, you can download the image to your hard drive. You can send it to a service like Buffer or Hootsuite, which is maybe a service you use to manage your social media. Or you can send it directly to LinkedIn or Instagram, the two social media networks that use square-shaped images. But as we mentioned before, Facebook, Twitter, 
Tumblr, and Pinterest all use images of different sizes and shapes. But don't worry about that. Design Feed does it for you. They remix the image to the right size and shape for each social network, and you have images uh, that you can download or send directly to the social media networks. And once you're done, click Done. You're then taken back to your dashboard where all your previous projects will live. You can return to that share page or you can go back and continue to edit the image. The next service I want to walk you through is called Adobe Spark from the makers of Photoshop. This offers you much more control and many more options. So if you're more comfortable with your design skills, this may be the app that you gravitate toward. You can find it online at spark.adobe.com and you do need an Adobe account, but they are free. Let's click this plus button and post to begin. Let's paste in our profound quote, select Instagram, and hit continue. They give you an initial image, but here on the right side are many more templates that you can begin with. Let's select this one. Now here on Adobe Spark, you can move any element around. You can also resize it and change the shape of the text box. You'll notice these dotted lines help you align to the center. And you'll see too that there are these olive wreaths sort of acting as parentheses. I don't really need them, so I'm going to go to text and then shape. And those olive wreaths are just one of many different designs you can use to decorate your text, or you can remove them completely. All right, now I said the quote, so I'm going to add my name by clicking on the photo and hitting add text. We'll resize and reposition that. And now you'll notice down here, hashtag Adobe Spark. You can share about the service on social media to remove the hashtag, or you can use their iPhone or iPad app, Adobe Spark Post. You can design without having that hashtag on there. But since there is a hashtag, I'm not going to add one of my own. I also can't add any branding like a logo. I hope this is a feature they'll add soon, but for now, let's just add my website address. We'll make it smaller and put it down here in the corner. Now, this looks pretty good, but like I said, when I thought of the word profound, I wanted the sunrise. So select photo and replace, and earlier I already searched for sunrise while preparing for this video. So here are some of the options. Let's see if we can find one that we like. This is a good one. We'll select this one. All right, so maybe now is the time to begin tweaking some of the options. Let's slide this quote a little bit higher. Let's get my name centered here in this middle hillside area. And now as cool as this font is, it's a little bit harder to read at a smaller size, so let's go ahead and change the font. Now you don't want to go crazy with fonts. Really, you don't want more than two fonts on your image. And you also want to create contrast. So since we have an informal handwriting font, I'm going to look for something a little cleaner, a little more professional looking. Maybe something like Futura. That looks pretty good. We'll hit save. Of course, again, if we wanted to, we could add shapes behind it. But I think it looks good without a shape. You can also change some of the colors. You can either change the color of the text specifically, or you can go to the palette pane. Here you can choose different color palettes to influence the look of the image. You can also choose the same palette more than once to cycle through different options using those same colors. Back on the photo tab, you can see here they have some filters, kind of like Instagram that will change the quality and the tone of the image. Again, you can choose it more than once to see different options. I like that look for the background, but now this text is too dark, so let's go back to text and we'll change it to a lighter color. All right, we're kind of back where we started, but I just wanted to walk you through some of the options. I'm now happy with this image and I'm ready to share it online. But again, like I said, different social media networks have different sizes and shapes. So under the resize pane, you can find Facebook, Twitter, things like Pinterest. They even have more options like creating an image for a Facebook ad or a blog post or some of those pesky images like Facebook cover photos and Twitter headers. You know, those photos that you need but you never really think about. Once you have the image that you like, click the share button. You can then select download, save it to your hard drive, and use the image anywhere you want. 
So as you can see, these are two free apps you can use today to create great social media graphics for your church or campus ministry. Thanks for watching.